Hey, it's Barry. And Dave. And Jerry. All right. With another episode of Hooked on Headwaters. This time nice. we're down here. Dave uh, is probably blocking out the whole... <laughs> <laughs> down here with a nice backdrop. Jerry's uh, airboat sitting in the cool. background here. Very cool. Nice. Very cool boat down here at the Stick Marsh. So uh, as we mentioned, new faces, new places. We're going to be filming from different locations, different lakes, different areas, give you guys something different to look at in the background and uh, catch a little bit of what we're, uh, you know, the, the beauty that we get to see every day when we're talking to, you know, more for the guys that are up north and gals up north, you know, great places down here when you come down to fish. So, uh, you know, we want to give you a little taste of that just to tease you up and get you going, I got to get down to Florida to <laughs> fish with these guys. So. <laughs> Sit. Or somebody just messaged me. Hey, I want to come down. Trip. That's it. <laughs> hey, so, it's Veterans Day week, and we want to salute and honor those who are serving in our military, those who have served, and those who gave it all, and their family. And I salute all serving and all that have served. Thank you. God bless America. Thank you, Dave. Yep. Thank you. So, as you're coming on down here to fish, to book your trips, just to come down to fish, whether you're fishing on your own or grabbing a guide, uh, we want to make sure that you uh, don't forget about the Davis House Inn. It is the best yes. place to stay. It's in Sebastian. It's right on the river. There is, it's walking distance to some great uh, restaurants and some bars and just a super place for the family to stay. Really big rooms, super clean. You can count on a great experience with Kyle down there. You can hook your boats up uh, to the electric so you can charge up your battery. Batteries. You got a hose to wash them down to get the dust mm -hmm. off. And if you mention hooked on headwaters, Kyle will give you that special discount. So, and if you decide to go saltwater fishing, he does have a dock where you can mm -hmm. keep your boat while you're, during your stay. So that's right. It's all around really, really great place to stay. And if you want to step up your stay down there, you want something different to do as well. Get hold of Dave here. We will go, go kayak fishing. Put you on. Well, actually, yeah, he, Dave's got three good trips. You know, this is a good time to mention this because we don't really mention this. Dave not only does fishing trips, but we also do eco tour trips eco because tours. there's. Go ahead, you tell them. So we do eco tours. This is a great place in the country to explore the back, the backwaters, mm -hmm. if you will. We also do um, trips here in Stick Marsh and in Headwaters. We also one of my mo most popular trip is our island excursion. So we take, I take a group out to one of the islands it's kind of your own island I bring out little chairs we hang out you get to swim you get to explore the islands many of these islands are connected so you can uh, walk these trails walk from island to island really really a cool trip something different so you uh, if you're planning a mm -hmm. vacation hey uh, book a trip yeah, because a lot of times we know the families come down, dads a lot of times will go grab yep. a guide, and yep. then the family's kind of there. So this makes it, you know, that's something else you can do with the family. Yep. And these and, are pedal drive, folks. Yeah. So uh, leave your hands free to take pictures, fish. So it's a very unique on the water experience. You see dolphin, manatee, birds. Yeah. Right behind us here is where all the spoonbill mate. Will, will be. Yep. So they're not here yet from July to January. Yep. So. Keep that in mind, and um, you'll have Kyle's information down below, as always. Dave will put that there, and we'll have it down in the description. So, um, hey, let's move on. All right, off I go to the camera. <laughs> All right, Jerry. What's up? Well, how'd the week go, man? You know, we're talking about, uh, you know, shiner fishing here has is, is, is been pretty good the artificials have been pretty good but you know let's talk a little bit about what how did keenansville do for you this week i fished at keenansville a couple days this week uh big numbers of fish but not too many big fish did lose a couple mm -hmm. probably you know you don't know how big but eight nine pounds probably i uh, fished yesterday in keenansville and we caught probably 30 um all shiners all mm -hmm. shiner fishing um we fished some in Headwaters last weekend with shiners and did really well. Yep. Caught a lot of fish and a lot of big fish. Um, also this week I'll be in Ken or I'll be in I'll be in Headwaters all weekend and most of the week fishing and um, we'll see what goes on there and we'll talk about that next week. But right now Kenningsville is producing fish. Um, not so much on artificial, but they are yeah. hitting shiners well, now, and the hydrilla. We were talking about this though. They came in and just they laid that place. So last year in Kenningsville, we were catching record size fish in record numbers. I had a guy last year bring his boy and he caught six bass and six cast over six pounds. One was eight and one was ten. And this was a common thing every day. Mm -hmm. And then in September, 
they came in with helicopters and they sprayed a two-year growth for two years they let the vegetation grow in there and it had a tremendous amount of water hyacinths, uh, water cabbage, eelgrass. I mean, it was just loaded with mats, anything and everything, which, you know, that attracts the grass shrimp. The grass shrimp attract the bait fish, and then the bait fish attract the bass. And it was spawning season at the same time, and it was just a magical place. The fish are still there. I mean, they're landlocked. They're not going anywhere. Right, right. But the cover is not there for them just to be in one area. Gotcha. They're just spread out over the lake now. I'm hoping in the next couple months we have a full moon coming up on the 19th with these cool fronts coming in. That's going to push these fish into shallow water so they can bed. And, you know, there's only so many places in there that are shallow like that that they can get up in. So, I mean, you know, we'll see what happens in the next couple months in there. Sure. Right. And then Headwaters, of course, you've been on a few Headwaters spots Headwaters is on fire. <laughs> done really Headwaters well. Headwaters is on fire. Yep. Yep. It doesn't matter if you're fishing artificial. I mean, I had a fish last week over 10 pounds on a buzz bait. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, if you're buzz bait fishing, if you're speed worm fishing. Um, you know, as long as you're fishing the breaks and you're fishing that hydrilla, I mean, you're, you're, gonna, gonna, you're gonna catch fish in there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. No doubt. So, uh, yeah, the good things looking forward to this week coming up as far as those, you know, as far as the lakes overall, weather conditions gonna be. The weather's gonna be in the 70s. We got a little bit of rain coming in Saturday. It's supposed to be a little rainy maybe. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow it's supposed to be a little rainy, but it's, it's just a small front coming in. But the beginning of the week's gonna be in the 70s, nighttime. Monday night, Tuesday night are gonna be in the, in the 50s. <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then in, That's in cold for us Florida boys. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it cold, but them, you know, listen, them fish That's like it. it. They're like us, they don't like that heat. Yep. <laughs> so when that water starts cooling down, they start getting active. But it's gonna be in the 70s and it's gonna be, you know, mild wind one day it's going to be out the monday i think it's northwest and then tuesday is going to be out of the northeast um but it's going to be mild temperature dry the air is going to be dry it's not yeah. going to be a whole lot of humidity in the air so it's going to be a good week that'll be nice yeah and talking about weather there jump over to quick um, bow fishing update with that type of weather you know when it comes to bow fishing sunny skies um clear water or actually sunny skies and low wind is really our best friends you know clearer the water the better but um, this cold weather makes that water clear too it makes that settlement go to the bottom and it makes that water a lot clearer yeah so it should uh should be a good week for bow fishing if you're interested in um hit dave and i up up for a bow fishing trip that's another thing that we do we're doing guided trips for that um, currently we're doing fresh water and we're going to be adding salt water on as well as we're coming into the winter for flounder and sheep's head so um if your plans are out for december january um, let us know if that would be something you'd like to do as well something you know go take a bass fishing trip and then let's go uh stick some uh, flounder sheep head or just go out and have a great time shooting tilapia and gar. yeah yeah a lot of fun a lot, lot of fun. Once they, once people get that first, actually that coming first in fish, they, yeah. they just they're hooked. Coming in from Kenningsville yesterday, right back here in the backdrop, there's a place that just a big, just a big open area back here. And as I was coming across there yesterday, I mean, just tilapia were just going nuts. I mean, they were just going everywhere. So I mean, it's just there's tilapia out here to shoot all day long if you want to shoot them. Yeah, absolutely. It's lots of fun, and we don't just take them and throw them back either. We uh, put them to good use. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> that's it they are good eating too dave's wife uh she could open a restaurant cooking tilapia i'm telling you she does the best job ever cooking them so uh yeah so anyway there we are with that all right gonna jump over to jerry here uh one of the things we like to do as a regular part of our shows we've done them and we're going to continue to do them is rig ups talk about you know whether it's baits what artificials live baits so we really want to break down because a lot of folks that are coming down if you just you know I mean, you're a fan of shiner fishing if I you just want to fisherman. catch fish shiner fishing is the way to do it but there's some things that you need to know as far as rigging <coughs> up that are is going to be give you the best chance of getting okay up. so here we go if you are interested in getting into shiner fishing or if you've just started shiner fishing and you don't really know exactly well you know what should i use what should i buy i like to use a seven foot medium heavy action rod now these rods here i build i build them myself so but that doesn't mean anything you can go to any sporting goods store dick sporting good walmart bass pro shop anywhere like that and you can find a good quality seven foot rod medium heavy action eight to 17 pound test but 
what I do is I use braided line power pro it is a 1250 it's a 12 pound diameter which this is rated for 8 to 17 so that that's well in its range but it is a 50 pound test you need that 50 pound test because these fish are big these shiner fish that you catch majority of them are big fish and you need a line that you can get them in and out of that hydrilla you know if you got a 12 or a 15 pound test line the chances of you bringing that fish in are slim to none this reel here that i've got this rod matched with is a pin 4000 it's a saltwater reel but it's a heavy duty reel and that's why i use it now the other rods that i have set up are set up with flugers flugers an inexpensive reel but it's a good quality reel and it take a lot of abuse and that's why i use them because my customers abuse them so when you get up here to the hook part i use a i use a number of different hooks but this hook i find here is the best for customers it's it's got a good hookup rate it is a six aught eagle claw circle hook and i take this cork and i just run it about 30 inches with the pending right now about 30 inches where i'm fishing about 30 inches or so above the line no weight and you know if you're in some heavy hydrilla and it's you know only a foot below the surface then you can lower that down and if you've got that kind of cover you can hook that shiner through the back um you know if you want him to run a little deeper you can hook him through the, through the mouth but basically that's what you need to to move these big fish if you're going to use them to, to catch shiner you know for shiner fishing if you're going to use that fish with for bass it's just a heavy setup it's got a lot of backbone and you don't have to worry about anything it, it'll handle it and you know that's what you need and that's what i use and that's what i recommend yeah it'll definitely do the job yeah. and you need that medium heavy because i well, use you, uh, i'm, I'm a spinning have, from, um, guy you know from saltwater for so many you, years you know if you're using if you're using a medium action or you're using something with a soft tip because you're using a crankbait and you know you don't want to jerk that lure mm -hmm. out of that fish's mouth or something like that that's fine but listen don't worry about jerking that hook out of that fish's mouth with a shiner i mean you yeah. want to put a hook in it because some of these fish you know you hook them in the side of the face and they're just they got platy mouths, platy faces, and you're just not going to get them in if you don't set a hook on them. So that right there is what I recommend. A medium heavy seven foot rod with at least a 4,000 reel, whether it's a pin, Shimano, a Fluger. Um, Number 50 six. pound braid, 12 pound diameter Power Pro. And that's your setup, buddy, right there. So Jerry, I have a question. How do you determine where to put your bobber? I, I mean, if you're, out low. if you're fishing, if you're fishing in five foot of water and the hydrilla is coming three feet off the bottom i wouldn't set that cork more than about 18 inches deep and i would put that shiner through the back that way he will walk on top of the water he'll cause more fuss and also if you hook them to the back and they do get in the hydrilla you can just pull a little bit and that shiner will come out of there where that if you've got him hooked in the face he will bring all that hydrilla with him and then you got to get it off of him if you're fishing and you know if you're fishing a break that goes from two and a half foot on a flat and it drops off into a eight nine foot canal or something like that and the high drill is only three feet off the bottom set that thing three feet deep and then hook him through the mouth let him stay low and you know work it that way very good yep it's it's a great time i tell you, you i'm know. a shiner fisherman at heart <laughs> right i'm mostly artificials but uh definitely can appreciate the fun especially for kids for you know family that you know they don't want to be you know you have folks that come in that they, they don't want to cast they don't they don't want to you know mess with working an artificial lure they 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 want to come in and they want an opportunity to catch a world-class bass yeah and just to me a shiner is the best way to do it yeah right and again it is a lot of fun <laughs> it's, it's, it's addictive yeah right <laughs> absolutely all right thanks eric because that's uh, going to be a big help i think a lot of people are going to take that advice and, and you know once they get into it like you said once you get addicted to catching fish no doubt so all right time to jump over to the hack of the week ken's going to go ahead and uh, provide it again folks if you have a hack send them in uh, we really appreciate the hacks that ken submits because they're always super high quality and we do want to give a big thank you to ken for his service uh, great guy if you ever get a chance to run into him you know catch him as far as doing his hat catch him on the water 37 year 37 years veteran yeah wow colonel colonel and uh seen and done a lot so you catch him at the ramp give him a 
a thumbs five, up. Five, yeah. Fist bump. Give them a big thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks, Ken, and uh, thanks for putting these hacks out to us because uh, they help a lot of people. So let's jump to it. Okay, guys. This uh, hack is uh, what I call the Franken crank, which I think you'll uh, understand uh, once we're uh, done with it. It's really simple. Only need a couple of things. So number one, I want to get your favorite crankbait. This is a uh, Strike King, I think, a DB6, classic uh, Sharptruce and Blueback. You'll also need a spinnerbait. Uh, you'll want a spinnerbait that you don't want to use anymore because maybe the hooks are rusted or broken or something. Uh, you will want this part to be in good shape because that's what it's going to use. For this demo, I just went to Walmart and bought a $1 uh, spinner bait just to use and then you'll need a pair of pliers and you'll need a pair of cutting dykes okay so real simply all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your spinner bait and you're gonna cut it off right at the end of the wire where the the head is okay and you just break that off just like that you're not gonna need this anymore this is all we're gonna need okay then the next thing you're gonna do is take a pair of needle nose pliers and you're going to make a little tiny uh, loop in it just like that there okay and you're going to do and so it's going to be pretty much just like that okay then you're going to take your crankbait and all you're going to do is you're going to hook this blade onto the front of this split ring for your crankbait and crimp it okay and i'll show you what one looks like here i've already completed one okay like i said you take your uh bait there and you just crimp it right onto there and now what you've got is you've got a crank bait with a pair of spinner bait blades on it and let me tell you the action of that is really something unique that uh, the bass have never seen and so if you're interested in cranking and that's the kind of thing you like to do uh, give this a try i think you might be amazed at how effective this kind of thing is if you like crankbait fishing all right guys and gals don't leave yet we're not quite done dave's got a couple things we're going to talk about here we've got the new segment of the show that we're going to be bringing yes, in Siri called from dink to donkey <laughs> all right hey you got some good catches from a dink to a donk <laughs> send them in to us um, you can you can contact barry or dave separate at hookedonheadwaters.com let us know your name where you caught it how you caught it if there's any story behind that fish send it in this is not a competition this is just to show off your catch and add it to the show and it just we're just going to have fun with it yep absolutely yep. And i want to remind everyone if you're looking to book a trip we got my man here jerry he's a great great fisherman knows this area really really well great with kids family trip this is your guy and we encourage you to book with him you can contact us hooked on headwaters you can contact them directly and uh we will hook you up absolutely you got anything in closing there jerry Call me, I'll take you to catch a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll take the picture. That's right. All right, folks. So, hey, we appreciate each and every one of you watching our videos. You know, we've been building this channel up. We're having a real blast. Met a lot of great folks along the way, and we hope to meet a lot more. So, yes. um, you know, if you don't mind, you know, hit the like button. Uh, comment. Please comment below if you have any questions about anything having to do with fishing, uh, whether it's a rig up, whether it's, you know, how to fish a certain kind of bait. You know, be it a, a crankbait, be it a frog, be it whatever, top water to a yeah. Yeah. deep diving crank, yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. If you have a question about it or you're like, hey, how do you rig this up? Let us know. We'll put it on the show and um, go from there. So, because we really appreciate, we really like the interaction, you know, between everybody, you know, and us. So, makes it even more enjoyable for us to do what we do. So, we will see you next week. Yeah, Thanks hey, for watching. Folks, please subscribe, thumbs up. Hit that notification button. Keep those comments coming in. It really helps us. Helps us expand the channel and bring you more content. That's it. So. All right, guys. Have a good weekend. We'll right. See you next week. God bless. See so y'all.